the red moon of Ruidus rises over another member of Bell's Hells. I know that sounds bad. Welcome to Roll Recap, our weekly-ish look back at the most recent episode of Critical Role. Before we dive into the new episode, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you never miss a fantasy and tabletop update. Also, this video contains spoilers about Campaign 3 of Critical Role, and in particular, Episode 39. You were born! Bell's Hells is heading to Eos in the aftermath of Estoros' murder by Odahan Thule, seemingly to investigate this whole Ruidus business that's dominating the campaign. However, it's what happens during the journey there that really sets up the next potential arc of the series. While on the Silver Sun, the party's new skyship, a Ruidus flare somehow causes Chetney to go berserk, and he attacks Orm and Fern. The encounter was a relatively brief one, but it does point to some potential connections between Chetney and Ruidus. This was previously hinted at a few episodes ago during a vision in which uh, Ruidus somehow turns its gaze upon Chetney. It sees Chetney somehow. It sees you now. And it's found common ground. So, either Chetney was turned during the Red Moon of Ruidus, or the malevolent force inside the moon has somehow taken a note of Chetney. Neither of these are good for the party. It also does raise some concerns about the group's potential visit to a group of lycanthropic blood hunters. If Ruidus can somehow cause rare creatures to go berserk, it could be a problem for both the party and, well, all of Exandria. Just imagine an Exandria full of berserk, murderous Chetneys as every lycanthrope loses their mind whenever a Ruidus flare happens. Do you get a load of me? Hey, speaking of Ruidus, Imogen had another creepy vision during that Ruidus flare. After encountering her mother in said vision, Imogen casts Sending, and surprisingly receives a reply. Imogen has been under the impression that Liliana's been dead or missing all along, but it turns out that she's alive and could have been contacted with the use of magic. Given that she was last seen in Eos, it's awfully convenient that the party is heading in that direction. Of course, the episode ended with Liliana responding to her daughter sending, so we'll have to wait until next week to hear their conversation. I hate waiting. So what's the deal with werewolves and Ruidus? Let us know in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the character sheet.